The orphan daughter Yuning lived a miserable life in the hands of her aunt, easily facing an opportunity to turn her fate around, but she also realized that her apprentice father seemed to have ulterior motives. The Misty Massacre, the unusual and unique Dharma form, and the cursed fate all clearly demonstrate her uniqueness. As she stepped into the sky and walked step by step towards the ultimate mystery of fate, there was an irresistible temptation in front of her. Whether to accept the arrangement to become a puppet, or to stick to her true nature and move towards more unknowns, it was only her own choice keywords of the novel. The Journey of the Curling King's Cultivation Without Pop-Ups, Complete Collection Download of the Curling King's Cultivation Journey TXT, Latest Chapter Reading of the Curling King's Cultivation Journey. Chapter 1. Unknown Path. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1 Unknown Path, That Little Slut Was Really Lucky To Be Favored By The Great Power Of Mingyue Sect. Someone inside Chiman Xiu's house complained fiercely. Why is it that fox spirit, stupid and foolish, with an average body? What exactly does the Grand Master like about her? This voice was softer, thinking it was a child who had not yet grown up. She took up the quota, so what should I do? Mom, you need to think of a way. Two shadows appeared on the window paper, and the larger one gently stroked the forehead of the little figure, saying, Your father can't change what the Grand Master has decided, let alone your mother. If you ask me, we don't have to cling to the Minua sect. Linger, you have a very good Dharma body and your roots are above the seventh level. It's not easy to find a sect that is better than Minua sect. My mother just thought that Lu Dashi and your father have some friendship, and you will have a reliance when you enter the sect in the future. Unexpectedly, Lu Dashi didn't have the taste to pick on you, but he chose that foolish girl. That's all. Just tell her to go and see what kind of luck she can have. Let's go to the Phoenix Valley and cultivate a spiritual body in the future. Come back and be ashamed of Lu Dashi and that foolish girl's faces. Yuning stood in the corridor, watching the two figures in the room cursing recklessly. After listening for a while, she felt that there was really no news to draw from, so she turned around and walked back. Before leaving the lunar cave door, I suddenly heard my aunt scold me with ill intentions. Who knows why Master Lu took her? He said she was an apprentice and secretly used it to make a cauldron, and who knows? Looting. Yuning stood still, and her cousin in the room also asked, Mother, what is looting? It's just the method of picking yin and tonifying yang, my aunt sneered disdainfully. Look at that little slut with average talent, silly and foolish. What else is there besides a stinky skin bag that people can see through? If that's really the case, I won't let your father collect her body when she's beaten to death by the sparring that day. It won't affect the face of our Qin family. Her cousin remained silent, probably due to the status of an unmarried woman, she couldn't speak ill like her mother, but she didn't know what she was thinking. Yuning held on to the blue brick, her heart trembling uncontrollably, picking Yin to replenish Yang. Picking Yin to replenish Yang although she was only twelve years old, the scene of her family falling apart was deeply imprinted in her memory. As soon as she became a female member of the family, she was sucked and dried into a dead bone by the demon who was picking up Yin and Yang. Is it true that Master Lu took her as his disciple and wanted her to make a cauldron? Remembering the real person I met in the daytime, clearly possessing a fairy-like demeanor, how could I possibly do the same thing as that demon? Quickly returning to the room, Yuning didn't have time to comb or wash. She slept with her clothes and wrapped herself tightly in a blanket, only to feel a slight sense of security in the cocoon wrapped in the blanket. She doesn't have her own maid, which used to be inconvenient, but today it's convenient for her to eavesdrop. The worries that were suppressed just now resurfaced in my heart. If I really worship Lu Dashi as my teacher, what he will do to me will be beyond the control of outsiders. I can only let him knead and flatten me, following the footsteps of those female relatives in the family. But what are the benefits of staying here? My uncle is loving but always in seclusion, and there are always things she can't take care of. My aunt only treats her like a dead person, and my cousin even wishes to turn her gaze into a knife, 
cutting her out one by one. Stay here, there is no way out, you cannot practice secret skills, you cannot become a cultivator, and you cannot seek revenge. And walking out, there is always a glimmer of hope. Yuning clenched the blanket tighter and made up her mind. Anyway, if there is a chance to leave, she shouldn't be drowning here. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Fake Love and Intention You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Fake Love and Intention The next morning, a girl reluctantly picked up a savings box and threw it on the table for Yuning to handle. Yuning had long been accustomed to the unpleasant faces of these people. Upon opening it, the food and vegetables in the box were indeed just like those of a third-class girl, indistinguishable. After breakfast, she headed towards the front hall. After the disaster of the Yun family's downfall, she was lucky enough to be brought back by her uncle. For a whole six years, she lived a life named Lord, but in fact, it was only a slightly better life than a servant. Uncle Qin Feng's cultivation often falls into a bottleneck and she often shuts down. Aunt Li and cousin Qin linger see her as a thorn in their side, thinking that Linyang City is already a small place, and the Qin family is just a small force in the small place. The resources that the younger generation can enjoy are already limited, but now another mediocre Miss Biao has cut the resources in half. How can the mother and daughter not be angry? Yuning came to the front hall and bowed to her aunt Li, Li glanced at her and still turned around to talk to Qin Linger, leaving her as if she were heir. Yuning stood silently, as in the past. Within half a month of her arrival, Qin Linger brought a group of mother-in-law and girls into her room, carrying the toys her uncle had given her clean. Fresh clothes were torn into small pieces of cloth in front of her. Later, Li called her into the room, saying that her uncle's cultivation was hard, but don't let these things ruin his mood. She was a bereaved star and killed her family. Now that her uncle had kindly given her a place to settle down, she should be satisfied. After finishing speaking, she stripped her two maids and asked her to wash and sweep by herself. At that time, although Yuning was young, she knew that there was no distance between relatives, so she just thought she was bought as a servant. Even when she had leisure time, she never came to Li's side to obstruct her eyes, only secretly hid in the library to browse through ancient books. Small fashion is like this, and now it's gradually getting bigger, and I won't be swayed by these things anymore. After chatting with Qin Linger, Li opened her eyes and looked at the loser. She remembered that she had been fortunate enough to be taken notice of by Lu Dashi. She was so angry that she crumpled a handkerchief, but her face remained calm. She called Yuning to her and said, It's your blessing that Lu Dashi can take notice of you. You should cherish it. It's still early in the day, and before it's time to pay respects to the master, you should go back and pack your things. Once you have paid respects to the master, you will follow Lu Dashi. In the future, the spiritual journey will be long, and we will still rely on you to take care of it. Although he said this, he looked very disdainful in his eyes, clearly not believing that with Yun Ying's crude roots and a body that was better than nothing, he could break through any new fame. Yun Ying agreed to go and went back to the house to pack his things. There's actually nothing to pack, just a few old clothes, a few scattered beads, and no silver coins. Her monthly routine was equivalent to Qin Linger, but in these six or seven years, she never saw a copper coin fall into her own hands. After all, even if Qin Feng didn't stay in seclusion all year round, the big things in the family would still be decided by his aunt. Even if he didn't deduct his own share, he would still instruct those maids to rely on his own money. In short, he wouldn't let her have even a tiny advantage. Yuning sighed and tidied up her package. She glanced at the blooming white peony in the courtyard and personally carried the package to the front hall. At this moment, uncle had already accompanied Lu Dashi to the main seat, with Li and Qin Linger on the left. Seeing Yuning coming, Li had already changed into a smiling face and said, In air is here, why did she still take her own hands? Xiao Kei Xiao Yan, if you don't help Miss Biao carry her bag, she's really getting lazier and lazier as she gets older. End of this chapter
Chapter 3 Worship Ceremony You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Worship Ceremony Lu Dashi is still as beautiful and refined as he saw yesterday, unlike ordinary people. My uncle, on the other hand, looked at her with a smile on his face. Although he was busy maintaining a stable state and kept her in seclusion, he truly regarded Yuning as his own daughter. However, his heart was haunted by a demon, and the death of his sister and brother. In law made it even more serious. He had to practice in seclusion for several years without leaving. Although he was powerless in taking care of Yuning, it did not mean that he also had the same hatred towards his niece as his wife and daughter. Now that Yuning can secure a good future, he is also genuinely happy. Aying, why don't you serve Lu Dashi tea soon? He beckoned his maidservants to bring tea, and Yuning reached out to take it and presented it to Lu Dashi. Later, after performing three bows and nine kowtows, he called out, Master, and truly became Lu Dashi's named disciple. With a wave of his hand, the master shot a yellow light out of thin air and landed on Yun Ying's hand, but it was a delicate and small yellow bag. Yuning just held it and didn't dare to open it immediately to take a look. Lu Dashi smiled and said, I'm getting old and don't know what's going on in young girls' families. I'll give you a portion according to the regulations set by Mingyue sect. This is my good intention as a master, not to give it to you in advance. When I arrive at the sect, you will still receive the portion for the next three months. Qin Ling'er couldn't hide her jealousy, and hearing this made her eyes even more angry. If it weren't for her mother desperately holding on to her, she was afraid she would have erupted on the spot. Yuning did nothing but sit in his seat, and after finishing his meal, he stood up to bid farewell to his uncle and aunt. Uncle, Yuning lowered her head and said, Ah Ing originally planted a white jade peony for her uncle as a birthday gift this year. She didn't want to have this kind of fate today. This year, my uncle is celebrating his birthday, and I'm afraid Ah Ing won't be able to come back. I hope uncle can move that peony to the flower field, which can also fulfill Ah Ying's filial piety. Qin Feng agreed with a smile, and Yuning picked up the package and followed Lu Dashi out, riding in his carriage and leaving. Qin Feng bid farewell to the person and remembered what Yuning had said about the white jade peony. It touched his heart for a moment and he walked to Yun Ying's courtyard. Seeing that the white peony was indeed blooming brilliantly and lovely, his heart warmed even more. Looking back on the scene when he and his sister cultivated the white peony together, he thought about how carefree it was at that time, but now that things are different from people, he couldn't help but smile and sigh, and his emotions were full of twists and turns. Looking up, he saw that the door of Yun Ying's boudoir was wide open, and couldn't help but frown again. These little girls must consider her a Miss Biao, so they don't always serve her wholeheartedly, Qin Feng thought to himself, feeling that something was wrong. Upon closer inspection, the room was completely bare, except for the sitting and sleeping utensils and the copper basin for washing. Did Madame send someone to take the things back? Qin Feng thought this way, and then he denied it to himself. If you want to take back the things, naturally these bedding utensils should be replaced first. Besides, he has never seen his wife assign someone to tidy up the things during the past two days of receiving Lu Dashi after leaving the border. That's. Qin Feng's mind turned and he felt a lightning strike on his head. He turned angrily towards the front hall. Over there, Xian Qin Ling'er was still complaining to her mother, Mom, look at that little slut. He's so proud today, his eyes are flying straight at me. Ling'er, don't worry. Your mother has already sent someone to contact the experts of other sects for you. You just need to rest assured that Danang will come to Linyang to recruit disciples in just a few months. You should behave well and your future will not be worse than that of the little slut who climbed the high branch. Little slut. Qin Feng was already angry and came to provoke a teacher to question him. Upon hearing this, he was even more furious and immediately kicked the door in. So that's how you always treat A Ying. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Deep Mind. You are listening at novelfull.audio.
Chapter 4 Deep Mind The mother and daughter were already accustomed to saying bad things about Yuning, and even thought that Qin Feng had always been careless and reckless in small matters. They didn't expect to be caught today, and when they saw him angry, their faces turned red and they were both hesitant to distinguish. Qin Feng couldn't guess what kind of life Yuning had been living these past few years when he saw the two of them like this. He felt both ashamed and angry for a moment, and immediately shouted to Qin Linger, You are so disrespectful at such a young age. It was your mother who taught you bad. Why don't you hurry to the ancestral hall and reflect on it? As he spoke, he drank his life and came up with his confidant, gripping Qin Linger left and right, without hesitation, to take her to the temple. Upon seeing this, Li didn't care to be afraid in her heart. She rushed to the two of them and grabbed Qin Linger, shouting to Qin Feng, It's good that my aunt is not kind, but the master is too confused. How could he punish his own family for the sake of outsiders? Qin Feng became even angrier upon hearing this and said, What outsider? That's my own niece. After a moment of calming down, he said, Don't be busy either. I'll go check the account now. If I find out anything wrong, you'll wait too. Upon hearing this, Li's face turned pale. Seeing her like this, Qin Feng knew that his niece had indeed been treated harshly these past few days. He felt ashamed and had nowhere to vent his hatred, so he could only curse at his two confidants, what are you two still standing for? Hurry up and take the person to the temple. Although Yuning couldn't see the vibration of the Qin family, she could remember it because it was originally planned by her. She had seen in her mother's handwriting that before leaving the cabinet, there were only her and her younger brother Qin Feng, two children at home. The adults were busy practicing and competing for territory, and they inevitably ignored the two children. They relied on each other and had a great relationship with each other. On her fourteenth birthday, Qin Feng planted a white jade peony for her, saying that in the future, when her sister left the cabinet, he would personally arrange flowers for her. The white jade peony has two pink and white flowers, which were planted by her mother and uncle on the same day. It may be a pink flower, but unfortunately, that color is extremely rare, and only one out of a hundred plants can be found. Yun Ying's available resources are limited, and the peony seeds were obtained from a woman who manages flowers and plants by working tirelessly for several days. Due to their high value, it is impossible to exchange them for a second time, which Yuning deeply regrets. However, the situation was somewhat different from what she had planned before. She had originally planned to grow up to thirteen years old, and when selecting disciples from various major sects, she would find an opportunity to join the sect. Before leaving, she would design and achieve the desired effect in this way. Unexpectedly, this year there would be a great power passing by and she would be accepted as an apprentice, so she had to use this move in advance. This is not a bad thing, Yuning lowered her head and thought to herself. If she were to be taken as a disciple next year, Qin Linger would definitely have been picked out long ago. Even if she had not left home yet, the Li family, who was backed by the sect, had the courage to argue with her uncle to the end. Unlike now, Qin Linger has no one to rely on, and her uncle naturally punished them severely. As for how to punish them, she didn't care anymore. They were the only family, and even if they were hurt a hundred times in anger, they would still live behind closed doors and never really turn their backs. She knew this and endured the hibernation until she gave the two a blow before leaving. After much contemplation in her heart, she realized that the carriage had already left Linyang City. The scenery outside the window was very charming, and Yuning stared with a smile on her lips. Finally, I no longer have to argue with that mother and daughter, and finally. I am free. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Spiritual Cultivation You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Spiritual Cultivation Yuning saw the infinite scenery outside the city for the first time, and was mesmerized by it. However, she heard her newly worshipped master calling her and quickly turned her face to respectfully respond. Lu Dashi twisted his beard with a smile and said affectionately, 
I see you don't walk much in the Qin family, and you don't want to lift your head for a while. You even consider yourself a mud-carved puppet, so you have a childlike nature. Yuning smiled shyly and lowered her head, not answering. However, she remembered Li's words in her heart. She knew that Li was despicable, and her eyes were limited to naturally looking down on everyone. But that was also a possibility. She wouldn't relax her guard so quickly against the seemingly amiable person in front of her. It should be noted that when she was first received by the Qin family, the Li family also greeted her with a smiling face, being meticulous. Later, when her uncle closed down, he revealed his true identity. Who knows if this Grand Master Lu will also reveal his true colors to her one day. Lu Dashi didn't know that she was young, but her mind was full of twists and turns. He thought she was shy and afraid of others, so he comforted her, don't worry, disciple. Although it's thousands of miles away from home, I have several disciples under my door. Your youngest senior sister is only one year older than you. In the future, you two will be together and won't make you lonely. Yuning nodded slightly and whispered, Thank you very much for your care, Master. At this point, she suddenly remembered that although she had secretly read many books behind Li's back, she had not seen any books about spiritual cultivation. Of course, Li had intended to be on guard against this, but now it was useless to sigh and hate. It was better to take this opportunity to go to the sect and ask her master well. With this thought in mind, Yuning spoke up, Master, although the disciples have already worshipped under the sect, they have no knowledge of the cultivation rules and the past of the sect. We still need to ask Master to clarify our doubts so that we don't let the disciples embarrass us in the future. Lu Dashi also noticed the little apprentice's obedient thoughts and looked at her meaningfully. He smiled and said, I was negligent. Although your uncle has achieved great success in cultivation, he is busy with seclusion and doesn't have much time to teach you. Anyway, I will explain it to you in detail as a teacher. Yuning knew that this was related to future cultivation, so she listened very attentively, only Lu Dashi said, our spiritual realm cultivation is divided into eight levels, among which the three levels of gathering meridians, refining blood, forging bones can also be called the mortal realm. We can only absorb the breath that is similar to our physical constitution. After cultivating the bone-forging realm to a great perfection, we can directly communicate with the mystical energy and cultivate the true element. At this time, it is the Rongyuan realm. The cultivators of the Rongyuan realm have left their mortal bodies and entered the mysterious realm for the first time. Your uncle is in this realm, but he has broken through due to misfortune, which naturally makes his mood unstable and his mind full of demons, which also makes life sigh the so-called calamity refers to the tragic downfall of the Yuning family. Prior to this, Qin Feng had been stuck in the great perfection of the bone-forging realm. Although only a narrow gap, he had been unable to find an opportunity to communicate with the mysterious energy. Until the calamity of extermination occurred, Qin Feng gathered fire and accidentally communicated with Xuanqi. Yuning had heard of this before, but at that time he didn't know the method of cultivation and only had a partial understanding of it. Only then did he truly understand the background. What is the realm after Rongyuan? She couldn't help but ask, half genuinely wanting to know, and half deliberately pretending to imitate Qin Linger's demeanor, trying to lower the master's guard. Of course, she didn't act too pretentious either. After living under the control of the Li family for so long and being picked too many thorns, she was already able to grasp the strength of it. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Legal Qualification You are listening at NovelFull.audio The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 7 Passing Through the Heavenly Stage You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Passing Through the Heavenly Stage Afterwards, the carriage traveled for three more days, passing through several bustling cities, and finally arrived at a mountain range. But this mountain range is different from the previously traversed wilderness ranges. Rows of mountain walls stretch straight into the sky, with lush green trees and misty clouds in the mountains. 
The rocks on both sides of the middle form a natural arch, and the long steps below the door extend straight to the front of us. Lu Dashi ordered Yuning to get off the carriage, and he himself flew down. With a slight brush of his sleeve, a large carriage disappeared. Yun Ying's face did not show any surprise because in the past three days, Master Lu had already explained to her all kinds of wonderful methods. Now that she was no longer at her uncle's house, she had no common sense. With Lu's action, she knew she was storing items in the mustard space. After putting away the carriage, Lu Dashi waved at Yun Ying. Yun Ying approached and only heard him say, all the disciples of Mingyue sect who are beginners must first go through those nine long steps to test their patience and perseverance. Although you are a weak woman, you cannot avoid this situation. You should go there again. Yuning looked at Chang Jia with serious eyes, nodded slightly, and Lu Dashi smiled again, you don't have to be too nervous. Your senior brothers and sisters didn't stand out much when they were too long. Our peak martial arts didn't emphasize this. You just need to go and don't worry about your grades. Yuning responded with her mouth, but she didn't think so in her heart. To do it, one must do the best. Just because others are indulging in comfort doesn't mean they should be like that. Yuning bowed deeply to Master Lu and said, Master, please wait a moment. The disciple has gone. After that, he lifted his foot and climbed the stairs. This long staircase leads directly to the mountain gate. Although you can see the end at a glance from the foot of the mountain, as soon as you step on it, the situation changes dramatically. The staircase seems to suddenly elongate, and the end suddenly becomes unreachable. Out of reach, but ultimately within reach. Yuning didn't look at his feet, only at the distant mountain gate. The sky it framed was shrouded in misty clouds, and he could vaguely see the mountains merging under the sky. Among them, there were flying people shuttling back and forth. Although those people seemed to be only as small as mustard beans here, Yuning knew that they all carried the power they longed for. And as long as she walks through this long step herself, she can still use that power. When Yuning stepped on the steps, Lu Dashi's figure moved and he arrived at the mountain gate. Two disciples quickly came out to greet him and smiled, saying, Lu Zhenren can be considered returning to the mountain. Lu nodded slightly and said, We have another disciple on this trip. I will wait for her to climb the long steps before returning. You can go to the inner gate steward's place for me to pass the message first. He handed a jade slip to two disciples, which recorded the lineage and body of Yun Ying's family. The disciples of the mountain gate took it with both hands and went to deliver a message, while the other remained guard at the door and said to Lu Dashi, although this junior sister's body is not obvious, her demeanor is calm. Many disciples only wanted to quickly pass the heavenly level, but instead wasted their efforts and fell halfway. However, the junior sister is unusual, calm, and it can be seen that she is not a thing in the pool. If it weren't for this benefit, how could I have included her in my family, said Lu Dashi with a smile and twisted his beard, half of which was flattery and half was truth the disciples of the mountain gate naturally agreed, but they slandered that no one knows that Chupo mountain master has the most disciples. There are several disciples who have been passed down personally, and there are countless named disciples. Even the slightest bit of impressive qualifications require him to be admitted to the sect, but only a few can achieve great success in the end. At present, this person is probably just like that. End of this chapter Chapter 8 The Road to Forge the Heart You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 The Road to Forge the Heart The conversation between the two on the mountain gate was completely unknown to Yuning. She only raised herself step by step. In fact, her physical condition is very weak. She has been treated harshly by the Lee family for many years, and her weakness is even more unbearable than that of ordinary girls. After just passing through a cup of tea, she feels panting, blushing, and heartbeats. However, she did not stop, nor did she want to stop. She did not count how many steps she had taken, nor did she look closely at how many steps were still in front of her. In her heart, there was only one goal, one more step up, one more step up. 
suddenly, a figure rushed past her in a hurry. They seemed to have appeared out of thin air, cheering friends and briskly running upwards. Occasionally, someone turned around and made a face at Yuning, saying, You're walking so slowly, so why don't you come and pay respects? Go home early. Yuning paused for a moment, glanced at them, didn't care, and continued to walk forward calmly. She didn't know if these people were true or false, but whether they were true or false, she wouldn't care. She had long learned not to compare herself with others, otherwise she would have fallen into jealousy towards Qin Linger. The disciple of the mountain gate was surprised to see that she had just shaken a little, and then returned to normal. This junior sister is really in a good mood, he said Lu Dashi also nodded slightly, but a hint of contemplation flashed in his eyes. After passing through fifty levels, one will enter the stage of refining the mind, transforming into many figures vying for it. If influenced by it, one will lose their composure and only focus on chasing after the virtual figures, but forget to regulate oneself. Eventually, one will be rejected by the heavenly road. Although there used to be new disciples who could grit their teeth and reach the final stage, they often had to be influenced by this journey, and there were very few who remained unmoved, such as Yuning. Both of them had their own opinions, but when they looked at Yuning again, their eyes were already different. Yuning knew nothing about this and continued to climb upwards. Her legs were already a bit sore, her feet were starting to ache, her breathing was getting heavier, and hot sweat was coming out one after another. Before long, she had already soaked all her hair. To make matters worse, she vaguely felt a heavy burden gradually covering her body, making her already weak body even more unbearable. It's the Qianjun section. The disciple of the mountain gate exclaimed in a low voice, thinking to herself that although this junior sister has a tough mental state, her physical condition is too weak to withstand the layers of the Qianjun gravity. As long as you can walk ten steps, it's considered good, sighed Lu Dashi. This Qianjun section is different from the heart refining section. With each step, a pound of gravity is applied to the person, making it difficult for them to bear. Originally, this was the last paragraph, and the disciples were already exhausted. They often couldn't take a few steps and were crushed down, unable to stand up anymore. These untrained disciples, especially female disciples, often have to give up after going through more than ten levels. However, none of the female disciples that Lu Dashi had received in the past could even reach the critical stage. Now that he suddenly has won, he doesn't seem to care much and doesn't expect her to go too far. As the two spoke, Yuning walked through the fifth step with difficulty. The weight of five pounds was certainly not heavy, but it made it difficult for her to move around like a sandbag wrapped around her body and feet, making it easy for her to climb up the sixth level. In an instant, the pressure on her body increased by another pound, and after reaching the seventh level, another pound was added. With such a heavy addition, by the time she reached the twentieth level, she felt like she was about to be crushed and unable to stand up. Going forward, she needs to take a few deep breaths on each step, and then concentrate all her strength on her feet in order to overcome the fear of double pressure and take another step. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Vibration Sect You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Vibration Sect Under Heavy Pressure, Her Mind Gradually Blurred in a daze, Yuning had already forgotten where she was and what she had done, only remembering one thing. Constantly moving forward. However, the front became more and more terrifying. She had reached the 100th level and had already borne a weight of 100 pounds, making her unsteady. If she moved forward, she was afraid that she would be immediately crushed into flesh and mud by that tremendous force. Yuning took a deep breath and a ethereal phantom sound appeared in her ear. Give up, even if you give up here, it's already great. She can get unexpected rewards. Yuning shook her head slightly, shook off the interfering magic sound, straightened her stiff waist, and rose to the next level again. A double force suddenly struck, almost knocking her to the ground. Yuning bit her lips tightly, her mouth full of a fishy iron smell, and the scenery before her was covered in a layer of blood red. 
Blood Red Yuning couldn't help but think of that bloody day, when the entire family fell under the hands of those demonic cultivators. All the cries and pleadings came to an abrupt end under those white jade-like hands. A hand as beautiful as a white jade, mercilessly swinging the snow droplets on it, so beautiful, so indifferent Yuning swallowed the blood foam in her mouth and struggled upwards again. This time, she no longer had the same fear and hesitation as before, taking every step. Instead, she adapted and immediately took a step. The pain caused by the heavy pressure and long walking gradually turned into soreness and numbness, and her legs and feet seemed to no longer belong to her. When she lifted her foot up the stairs, it suddenly softened and made her kneel to the ground. The disciples of the mountain gate thought that Yuning was about to be thrown out, so they quickly prepared to lift someone up. Unexpectedly, there was no movement on the steps, which made him feel a bit embarrassed. Fortunately, Lu Dada did not notice him and only looked at Yuning with a distant gaze. Xiang Yuning had already been pressed down and couldn't even breathe. He knelt on the steps to catch his breath for a long time before standing up again and continuing to walk upwards. With every step she took, she felt like she couldn't bear the whole thing bursting out, but she didn't. Since she didn't, she had to keep moving forward. Unconsciously, she could see the figure of Lu Dashi. Yun Ying's mood relaxed slightly, but then she became nervous again. She had already taken this step and must not fail at the last moment. She didn't know that those two people were also looking at her, trembling and trembling at every step, almost falling under pressure but unfortunately not falling at every step. Everything else had been thrown out of the clouds, and Yuning had no consciousness at all. She only knew to grit her teeth and swallow her blood as she continued to climb upwards. Finally, she was only three steps, two steps, one step away from the mountain gate with both feet resting on the mountain gate, Yuning felt a flash of white light in front of her, and the pressure on her body dissipated. However, she was blinded by sweat and completely fainted. The disciples of the mountain gate wanted to lend a helping hand, but they were afraid that their master was right in front of them. They didn't dare to step in and take over, but Lu Dashi didn't know what he was thinking about and didn't take action. Ren Yuning fell to the ground. At this moment, several streams of light flew in, transforming into several men and women with dusty appearances. The leader turned out to be a stunning beauty in a goose yellow shirt. She frowned slightly at the sight of Yuning lying on the ground, raised her hand slightly, and took her into her personal bag. Then she asked, Is this the new disciple who just broke through the heavenly level? Lu Dashi quickly regained his composure and respectfully replied, Yes, it's just a matter of passing the level by chance. I shouldn't be able to visit the sect leader in person. That's not right said a round-faced cultivator with a smile. Since the establishment of our Mingyue sect, there have been very few disciples who can walk through the Tongtian level. Besides, it's such a young woman. Lu Laur, not me. She's so talented and beautiful. You just let her fall on the cold stone steps, doesn't she look like a master? End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Each has their own thoughts. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10 Each has their own thoughts Lu Changqing's face changed and he hurriedly said, What can the Lord of Silver Bao Mountain say? This is the disciple I have received through countless hardships. How could I not cherish it? Just now, I only saw her mental resilience, momentarily lost in thought, and before she could take action, the Lord came to visit me with great enthusiasm. That's why I can't be more beautiful than before. Speaking of which, the Lord of Silver Bao Mountain already has several highly qualified disciples, so don't come and take advantage of others. The round-faced cultivator shrugged his shoulders and looked at the beautiful woman in the goose-yellow shirt. Master, it's been many years since Mingyue sect produced a disciple who has passed the heavenly level. I just took a rough look and found that this little girl has an average dharma body and has not practiced before. It can be seen that her resilience and perseverance are truly outstanding. There are too many disciples under the primordial soul mountain master's seat, so I'm afraid we can't take careful care of them. 
Isn't this a waste of good seedlings? Lu Changqin listened, not daring to show it on his face, but already gritting his teeth in anger. Zhao Furong was truly despicable, but he had only snatched a few disciples that he had favored. Unfortunately, he had remembered him since then and would occasionally say some crooked words to stab him. Now, he was even more determined to take away the last disciple he had easily chosen. This is the last and most crucial disciple. If he misses this one, he may not have a chance to choose another one. Thinking of this, he regretted it again. Why did he have to impulsively ask her to leave this heavenly staircase? Although it was said that everyone must leave, in fact, his inner disciples could have been avoided. It was also those crooked melons and cracked dates that made him relax his guard. Unexpectedly, even a small Linyang city, with such a crude and shallow woman in her hands, could still produce a phoenix in the old crow's nest. Lu Changqing's thoughts changed rapidly in his heart, but he dared not directly scold Zhao Furong back. He only said to the sect leader, I am truly admirable for my perseverance. However, my dharma body is somewhat crude, and I belong to the wood family, which is the most consistent with the non-talented. I think there is no need to delay my colleagues. Nevertheless, I am willing to obey the sect leader's orders on how to arrange it. The beauty in the goose yellow shirt sighed and said, The lord of Chupo Mountain naturally makes sense, but you have a lot of things to do under your sect. Now that you have added this new disciple, I'm afraid it will cause chaos and not conducive to the child's recovery. I will take this child back to Chanwan Mountain and have someone take care of her for a few days. When she is well, I will send her back to Chupo Mountain. Seeing Lu Changqing's expression on his face, the sect leader smiled and said, Don't worry, my disciple is still your disciple, and no one can take it away. I hold the position of sect leader, so naturally I cannot snatch the seedlings that you are interested in. I just feel happy when I see the opportunity to serve as the pillar of the sect. Please give me a chance to do my best. Speaking of which, Lu Changqing had no choice but to do so. When the sect leader dismissed the remaining mountain leaders and was about to return to the mountain, he suddenly remembered something and turned to smile at Lu Changqing, saying, This child's aptitude is indeed ordinary, but he was first added by my blue eyes. I'm afraid some young disciples may have some taste in his heart. The Chu Soul Mountain leader should take care of it in advance to prevent this child from being wronged when he returns to Chu Soul Mountain. Lu Changqing repeatedly agreed, his face darkened as he gazed at the distant snow. The disciples of the mountain gate on the side have long been kneeling on the ground, afraid to lift their heads. Lu Changqing is actually a cultivator from the Hashu realm. The arrival of the sect leader and other mountain lords together, although it also makes him nervous, does not make him feel afraid. However, for this disciple who is only in the Rongyuan realm, several Hashu and Dongming great powers have arrived together, and the pressure alone is almost enough to crush him. But compared to this, the argument between several experts about an entry-level disciple is even more shocking. After Lu Changqing also left, the disciple dared to stand up, but still couldn't regain consciousness. The disciple who was delivering the message returned and saw his senior brother dumbfounded. He quickly pushed him and said, What's going on? He has lost his soul. The disciple finally woke up and pulled another disciple to bite his ear, saying, Let me tell you, that junior sister just now. End of this chapter